Hello and welcome to Workflow Interview Question and Answer Series, Session Number Eight. So the very first question: How to restart a workflow after error? So answer for that is SWPR. So if you want to restart a workflow after error, this is the T code which can be used. So let me quickly show you this T code, how, what kind of interface and all it looks like. So this is SWPR and here, you know, you can give the task and everything or simply you can run it over here and see the uh, error related work item ID we will be able to see. So if you want to restart, the workflow we can click on this button and workflow will be restarted so you can see that it got restarted you can refresh it again it went into error so maybe some permanent problem will be there that need to be fixed because again it went into error if it would have been some temporary problem it would have not been gone into error so the question this is one vva question you can mark this from the workflow administrator point of view okay so this transaction in this today's session the question which we are discussing this these are going to be with respect to workflow administrator point of view you know so how to restart a workflow after error answer is swpr so here if you can see that swpr transaction is used when the work item status goes into error just i have shown you the status is error you will get one option to restart the workflow so let's suppose you have the previous uh, 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 running stage and got here into the error status so the main work item id is 10000 then for this task id this is the 10001 right and here in the error state when it went then the work item id is 10002 so when you use the swpr then another question it can be like whether the work item id is going to be different or going to remain same when you restart the workflow you know after error so see when you are going to restart the workflow restart will take place after the error step you know so till the error the work item going to remain same so this is very important actually you know it does not start from beginning if it will start from beginning then in that case what will happen that your main work item id and this work item id and this work item id will get changed so here you are kind of resuming the workflow from the error step. Okay. This is one important point which you should know. Another question over here, how to restart the workflow after system crash? System crash meaning your work item status will be there either in in process or in started. So generally we get these options mostly this in process status when your work flow task goes into dump you know so when the next step is not determined by the workflow then the work item status goes into the in process that means workflow engine is not able to determine what happened next your workflow in fact got hanged Know. so when you will be having the in process status or started status mostly this we are talking about then those kind of workflow can be restarted with the help of transaction swpc so if you see the swpc and maybe you can give some <clears throat> large time frame and here we didn't get any let's try to execute within large frame and then you can see that you will be able to see the information of the workflow which is there in the started status so if you want to you know continue from 
the place where it got crashed you can click on this continue refresh this one and if that would if that was a temporary error that would have gone and you can see that this got completed again you can click on this uh, continue and just refresh this one so workflow is getting cleared you know so that seems like was a temporary issue and when you click on this continue uh, workflow it's getting executed you can go and check it out the you know log and all by going into the transaction sw i1 or sw ia so sw pc transaction is used when you have the work item status in process or started now which decode is for workflow diagnosis from one place so if you want to diagnose a, a specific workflow then SWUD T code is very useful. This will give you all the option to diagnose a workflow from one place. You can see that you have this particular workflow and if you want to diagnose this workflow for a single place, different options you are having, right? So here, see verify automatic customizing. If you want to check it out, the customization and all, you can click on that button and you can go and check problem task not started if this is what the problem is there for that this is how you can troubleshoot determine instances of task refresh organizational environment all these things so different options you are able to see with the help of SWUD transaction so if you have the problem workflow is hanging then see you will get the different determine instances for task work item queue SWU to transaction you know the variant of SM58 so whenever workflow task instances gets execute it gets execute in the TRFC you know so if you click on this you know sometimes due to some network issue or due to some RFC problem the workflow task instances does not get executed and in that case if it is getting stuck over there you can go and you can re-execute from there right if you got some ABAP dump analysis you can click on that and it will take you to the st22 screen right so like that you are able to get over here the different options if you want to test sw us and all you know it will take you create event you know s w u e right so 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 one from one single place you will be able to see the multiple options multiple t code to execute and that's where the s w u d comes very handy okay fine another question what are the different variant of s w i2 t code so you can see that uh, by the workflow administrator these t codes are frequently used so if you want to identify the work items without agents then this is the t code the first swi2 underscore adm1 if you want to see the work items with deleted user deleted users means let's suppose today i am in one organization you know in tcs i got some work item to approve to hire someone then after two days i left the organization right so now i'm not there in the system for longer so those kind of work item if you want to see that then you can use this swi2 underscore adm2 okay similarly swi2 underscore dead work items with monitored deadlines here work uh, diagnosis of a workflow with errors swi2 underscore DIAG uh, and uh, like that you have the different option right work items per task work items by processing duration so those are the different variant of SWI2 again this is used by the workflow administrator here, what is the meaning of work items with deleted users? Just I have explained work item is there in a user one inbox. Let us suppose user one was deleted with some region or 
maybe he left the organization and then he was deleted then such work item can be seen under this t code okay another question over here what is the difference between execute and execute without check so what is the meaning of you know execute and execute without check in t code s w i a so if you want to understand the difference between this execute let me show you here in the system directly slice in s w i a and let's run it if you see here you get this option without check or with check right so meaning of with check or without check means if you have the authorization to execute the work item then only you will be able to execute the work item but if you are an administrator right even you no know, so administrator means admin right he is having every kind of authorization right so he will be able to execute so for example let's suppose user a user a receives a work item okay so when user a will log in into the system and go into the swia transaction he will be able to execute with check because user a is having the sufficient permission right but let's suppose user b receives some work item receives some work item and user a is willing to execute the work item of user b and he is trying to do so with the help of this button he will not be able to do because user a is not having the sufficient authorization authorization will be checked because the work item is of user b how the user a will be able to do right but just to assume a scenario where user b is not available in the office for 2 3 days and that work item is important to be approved then in that case workflow admin can log in into his system or whoever is having the sufficient authorization to execute this particular button you know without check so generally admin is having the sufficient authorization to execute this particular button so what he will do that the work item who is there with the user b he will execute with this particular button without check right so workflow admin can use this button to execute the work item of user b and without checking the authorization or whatever you know if it is he is admin or he is having the whole authorization complete authorization it will go and execute the work item of user b so this button is useful in that sense even the admin is trying to do with this button he will not be able to do because this button will check whether that work item is with the admin or with some another person okay so this button is to perform the check the proper check this button is interested to complete the work you know to execute the work item without uh, knowing whether it is in admin inbox or in another user inbox so hope you are able to understand what i'm trying to explain so let's go to the second next question okay so same use of without check option use of without check option is useful to execute the work item by the admin if the work item is there in some another user's inbox and that user is not available for longer 
part. Now, which two code can be used to check the work item in other user inbox? So if you want to see, so for example, here, let's go to transaction SWI5. And I want to see the work item available in user 20 or 21, right? Whatever the user above 21 is defined as a valid user in this system, right? And if you want to see the date on this 21 and I want to see all the incomplete work item. Okay, so I can click on this execute button enter date in future. Okay, work item to be completed, right? Let's see. I'm giving the today's date. So here you can execute. There is no work item, right? But if you see with the above 20 user here also, there is no, right? So maybe I'm giving one another date here also. So, so this, is, this is the place where you can come and see if a work item is available with any user to be executed, okay? Here, let's remove this date and then let's try to see. So if you remove the date, it's just getting, right? All the different dates received work item, right? Here, in the past it was received, right? So like that, you can remove the date and then you can check. So similarly, I will check with ABAP21. And for ABAP21, also some work item is there pending with, you know. Now, if you go to this, right? And then you can see that if you can send the email and all, all these functionalities there, if you want to uh, check the log and all, right? So log and all, that also user decision, you can execute from here you can uh, you will get the option to forward send email here forward see this option you are getting so let's suppose like uh, if you are a workflow admin and if you want to forward this work item from this user to above 20 user this is uh, i think let's see which user is this one this is above 21 so this work item uh, seems like the user decision related work item and what I want to do that I want to forward this work item to the above 20 or maybe I want to forward to my inbox so I can click on this okay and this will be you cannot choose yourself as an agent so it's telling that I cannot be myself as an agent maybe I can choose some another user and click on this okay and this forwarding carried out so now ABAP20 user can log in and take the action on this work item. So forward option also it allows, right? You can see that you can forward using this. You can see the log and all. If you reserve means, see the meaning of reserve means, let's suppose one work item you have and this work item is going to five different user user one two three four and one of the user the second user one has taken some action on this work item but it is not completed yet and he has to go to lunch right so he thought that let me first finish my lunch then when i will come then i will check all the detail and everything and then i will complete it so he has executed the work item but not yet completed so in that case for other user that work item will be shown as reserved okay so this is the meaning of reserve so if you want to manually reserve a work uh, work item then simply you can click on this reserve button and the work item will be reserved okay so this is also one way how you can reserve the work item without taking the action on the work item. Fine. And log and all, all these things you see, you know, attachment and all. If you want to see, then you can go through and check through that button. 